Hello and welcome to 41st lecture of video course on Travelogy. Topic of the present lecture is hydrodynamic journal bearings. You have studied what is the meaning of hydrodynamic action? It is basically governed with the velocity, relative velocity. It tries to pump a lubricant using the velocity is more like a pumping action because of the rotation. And sometime we call this action as self acting because of a certain rotation we are getting lubrication mechanism. So, from cost point of view this mechanism turn out to be cheapest if there is a lubricant supply. However, many times we couple hydrodynamic action with hydrostatic action. In previous lecture we discussed about hydrostatic lubrication. Hydrostatic lubrication has all advantages except the cost. As we require pump, we require tubing, we require extra manufacturing steps obviously that very precision manufacturing steps. The cost is a major drawback of hydrostatic lubrication and its cost is major advantage of hydrodynamic lubrication. So, often these two mechanisms are coupled, hybridized and most often hydrodynamic bearing which are being used they start with hydrostatic action and subsequently turn to the hydrodynamic action. That gives overall benefit from the cost, running cost particularly and low coefficient of friction almost 0 wear, no wear because we are when we are coupling hydrostatic with hydrodynamic there will not be any wear rate. However, if we remove hydrostatic leave only on hydrodynamic lubrication there is a possibility of wear at a start and a stop when the relative velocity is negligible small initially. So, we are going to discuss, we are going to start hydrodynamic lubrication mechanism using obviously the applying on general bearings. This is a typical uh, naval bearing, we said that they are process or these are the elastomeric bearings hardened properly. So, that they do not get wear out because of the debris that is why that they have a hardness and they can these kind of bearings can be operated with a water lubricant or we say the water acts as a lubricant gives a firm thickness separates the shaft from bearing surface. However, we can say this bearing is a cylindrical shape and particularly very long bearing your length to diameter ratio is 4 very large length then there is a possibility of other lens also smaller lens often used in automobiles because of the space constraint space restriction and again this kind of bearings are used in smaller size equipment where the L by D ratio even can be 0 0.1 0 0.2 and what we are showing here the L by D ratio as a 4 exceptional cases when the turbines blade or uh, turbine shafts are very long and we require many bearings, many bearings in many housing and they want to get rid of those housing, lesser manufacturing steps or is a lesser assembly steps. In those situations long bearings are acceptable or give overall benefit, otherwise long bearing are outdated concept we generally use the short bearing concepts. So, before starting hydrodynamic journal bearing, I want to see what happens exactly inside the bearing. When we think about what happens exactly inside the bearing, the image appears something like there will be a lubricant, something like dotted lines over here, will be dragged because of the shaft rotation, and then there will be divergent domain as available liquid which is incompressible 
goes in larger area, there will be discontinuity in liquid lubricant. Available liquid is lesser than available space. Naturally, air will occupy remaining space and because of the rotation, because of the viscous effect, often this liquid lubricant gets streamed obviously that number of uh, streams are combined together and show some cavity in between. We can think the whole liquid lubricant together at the center and and both the sides uh, both the sides of uh, bearing occupied by the air, but it does not appear when we watch uh, operation of uh, hydronic bearing. The question comes how to watch this, these bearings are not transparent, this can be hypothesized, we can think over, but how to prove it, then there is a provision, we can make this kind of bearing with a transparent material and that is shown here. We have used thermocouple fitting at the center, but it looks like the thermocouples are uh, the settings at the edges, but they, uh, this is the 40 mm thickness of the bearing and at the center around 20 mm, this is a 3 to 4 mm uh, rivet which is used as a thermocouple fitting can be seen and when we support shaft, we can see this kind of streamers, we can see the separation between the two lubricant columns and separation is with air cavity. We are also able to find out this kind of uh, rupture curve, lubricant gets ruptured over here. And we are able to see uh, this divergent domain is occupied with uh, air. It will be difficult to say it is absolutely or only the air, there is a possibility of some lubid, uh, oil or lubricant uh, particles getting dissolved or getting mixed with the air and making some sort of oil mist. That is why we are giving option all options, oil mist streamers, air cavity, rupture curve and to model all this cavitation, we require good mathematical treatment, more exhaustive calculations which we are not going to discuss. But this kind of um, picture, this kind of uh, sketch is able to show that bearing is only half loaded upper half, not exactly upper half, but almost 180 degree is unloaded or pressure generated in this divergent domain is negligible or maybe in the vacuum below the atmospheric pressure and that leads us to think of only half of the bearing is useful other half bearing is not that much useful. It gives continuity to flow. If we do not have upper half of this bearing, naturally this flow will not be circulated. We will be requiring too much lubricant because here lubricant is going to be pumped, all almost uh, complete lubricant is going to be pumped. It is not getting recirculated. Our lubricant flow rate will increase in this case. So, just with having this kind of thinking, naturally there will be some questions coming in our mind. First thing, there is a clearance between shaft and the bearing surface. This is a basically clearance fit joint and within this clearance, oil is getting recirculated or circulated. So, how this shaft decides I had to come to this position, the whole space available why it should get located at on only one position, it can get disturbed here and there make a different curves, but the way it has been shown, it shows that yeah, shaft is getting located at one position. 
the question comes how sharp decides its location that is a one. And that is why the question has been posed here how shaft is located. Second thing, how lubricant is getting pumped in this? We are able to see there is a liquid lubricant over here, lesser lubricant on this side, but from where the liquid lubricant is getting pumped, it is not being shown in this. What kind of arrangement will be used? to pump the liquid lubricant. So, these two questions need to be answered before thinking designing of journal bearing, hydrodynamic journal bearing. So, let us just think about the first question locating journal position. I draw, uh, I, I, I am showing a one sketch assuming that shaft is a steel surface and solid shaft. Then showing only the bearing inner surface, some sort of the droplet that means this clearance space is occupied with liquid lubricant. One equation has been shown over here, this says epsilon is equal to 1. This is a eccentricity divided by clearance, radial clearance and that is a maximum and we say that shaft is at the maximum displacement and touching the surface of bearing. For the operation we do not require this, because when the bearing and shaft surface are in touch naturally there will be solid to solid contact and that will lead to wear. Then other one is a phi equal to 0, question come what is this phi? Of course, we say this is attitude angle, but there is no angle in this. And last one says the W is maximum. This kind of situation occurs when applied load is at the extreme level, is a maximum value. Again, I can think of oh, whatever the load you apply, and if there is no rotation, shaft is going to touch the surface of the bearing. So, this is again a subjective depends on the operating condition. If there is a more and more rotation, there is a more and more possibility of W. If there is no rotation, even a 1 gram, 2 gram, 1 milligram that will be sufficient for shaft to go and touch the bearing surface. So, this is a relative term, it is a subjective term, depends on viscosity, depends on the rotation of liquid lubricant and shaft rotation. Now, as we are saying that this is depending on the shaft rotation, let us rotate this shaft. If shaft is start rotating, what will happen? This liquid will be dragged with the shaft surface. If that happens, more and more liquid is getting pumped this side and released from this side. And that will, and shaft is in a floating position, naturally shaft will slightly levitate it. And the shaft center will be dragged towards this side. And that is mechanism how shaft is getting located. See, where there is rotation naturally this portion is passing the liquid because we require some space. Our liquid will not be pumped, will not be transferred from one surface to others or from one side of the shaft to other side. Naturally, it has to give some clearance, some space and that is a levitation by hydrodynamic action. Naturally, this position obviously that this line is showing a connection between bearing and general center and this is a load line. A load is being applied in this direction. Angle between line of center and load line will be known as attitude angle. That is the reason why we are showing attitude angle 0 in this position. Line of center and the load line they are coinciding. They are in the same position, no angle, 0 angle. While because of the rotation, shaft center is getting shifted from its original position and getting levitated. Naturally, eccentricity will come slightly lesser than 1 or maybe more than 1 
sorry uh, lesser than 1, but much much greater like 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, but it will be more than 0 if load is been applied and this load final load will be lesser than W max reason being there will be some load generated by liquid which is going to oppose this shaft and that is what we say the equilibrium force apply load minus force generated will be lesser than maximum load at any this position. So, these are the two condition we said in this is epsilon is 1 shaft is completely centric touching the bearing surface here it is not touching the bearing surface that is why eccentricity ratio is lesser than 1 and again it is not coming to the bearing center. So, it is uh, greater than zero. Attitude angle here this, uh, uh, this phi is 0, but it does not reach to the maximum 90 degree. So, this angle will be between 0 and pi by 2 that is 90 degree. Now, third situation is also possible you see because of the shaft rotation and I suddenly remove the load. There is no load on the shaft surface what will happen this shaft is going to rotate and bearing the ajana center will also be getting rotated. They even though we are showing vertically down there is no load this shaft and bearing center will come in this horizontal line that is why the phi is been shown as pi by 2. There is a possibility of eccentricity slightly greater than were 0, but it can be approximated this epsilon is approximately equal to 0, 0.0. This is a why uh, depends on the rotation, depends on the load and of course, depends on the lubricant kind of lubricant we are using. Shaft gets located and overall if in a design we need to think from eccentricity point of view or eccentricity ratio point of view and attitude angle point of view. If attitude angle is very large naturally shaft is going to fluctuate it will not remain it is in a steady position that is why we are saying that eccentricity also will continuously change because of this. It is more like a, we have a 20 dollars or the 20 coins and one coin is uh, coming plus minus. So, naturally 5 percent variation, but we have 100 coins and 1 coin plus minus so only 1 percent. If we have 1000 coins and 1 coin plus minus so 0.1 percent same situation here. When eccentricity is very high even slight turbulence is not going to affect it much, but when the eccentricity is very low slight turbulence is going to create instability continuous uh, changing its position or shaft is going to change its position. Uh, in other words, uh, maybe a different way to represent is that when we talk about the general bearing, there will be shaft surface, there is a bearing surface, and there will be convergent domain, slight divergent domain. This will be occupied by a liquid lubricant. In divergent domain, in divergent domain, there will be a number of streamers separated by air cavities. That is why we know this uh, this kind of zone can be treated as a cavitation zone. And uh, this position start up pressure zone from the maximum film thickness position this angle will be decided based on what kind of feeding arrangement or supply of lubricant is been arranged. If we are providing some oil groove over here, some feeding nipples over here, then naturally liquid lubricant will be pumped from here and this will be occupied by most of the liquid. But if we are providing liquid lubricant uh, feed hole over here, naturally this portion will remain uh, cavitated. So, it depends on the location, also the location of the feed hole, bearing operation will be slightly different, overall equilibrium be, will be different, temperature rise also will be different. So, it is important to find out what kind of feed hole arrangement we are providing and what is the location of that. 
and uh, this node comes we say that why the streamers are being formed reason being oil or the liquid lubricant cannot be stressed in tension and the tension they will separate when the, there is a lesser pressure vacuum naturally tension is going to develop in the liquid and that is why they say that liquid lubricant will break down into streamers or uh, streamers or droplets having cavity in between those streamers. And uh, second uh, conclusion uh, which was uh, also presented in the previous slide, he said that bearing is effective only to 50 percent. I can not say exactly the 50 percent, there is a slightly more, we say many times this pressure zone is more than 80, 180 degrees, uh, 180 degree, but lesser than 210 degree. So, not exactly 50 percent, but portion which is beyond 180 degree will not be able to show a lot of uh, contribution to the load sharing. So, simplicity easy calculation we can assume bearing is effective only for 50 percent of its circumference. 50 percent of its circumference I am not talking about 50 percent of the length half of the bearing is from circumference point of view. Now, how to feed this uh, bearing and how to pump this uh, lubricant? We say bearings will be placed in housings and housing will have some oil supply hole. I can think about the through and through groove or oil hole or drill between bearing housing and bearing surface. Or I can think about supply at a smaller size hole, but we are keeping larger size pocket. So, that a turbulence is negligible, liquid is supplied and we have abundant supply of the liquid. So, bearing does not get a start like of the lubricant. So, this is possible. And depends on the requirement, we can think of the smaller dimension of this uh, uh, cavity, larger dimension or complete uh, cavities. So, there are three possibilities, we say that bearing also has a hole, housing also has a hole and these holes are going to be collinear or we say that their axes are going to match, this is a one possibility. There is another possibility that the way it has been shown that groove is extended. In this case, it has been showing as a 180 degree, but there is a possibility may be slightly different. And in this particular is shown that groove is a starting before maximum flow thickness line. Uh, before, uh, if I assuming the rotation in uh, this direction, we say clockwise direction, the oil hole arrangement, or we say the groove arrangement is before the start of this line of center or uh, maximum film thickness. In that situation, this, this portion, this complete portion will be occupied by liquid lubricant. However, if you place this glue somewhere here, naturally not complete portion will be occupied, only the some portion of bearing will be getting liquid lubricant. And uh, the groove extent can be thought over, this theta can be, theta 3 can be um, negative side also, can be 0 also, or can be any value. While theta 4 it will be slightly more than theta 3, that is why that is showing there is some extent out group. But there is another possibility, say so, whole circumferential groove in this. First thing comes in the mind, oh, this is not possible because this will be acting as a two bearings. If I come completely, naturally the bearing is not a single entity, it will be in two pieces. So, there is one possibility like that. Our other one is that we do not cut from outer surface, but this at the some depth this cavity will be there. Or uh, there is a not through and through slot in this, upper surface is covered having maybe a thickness of 3 mm and at the depth there is a groove in this. So, if I assume the 10 mm thickness of the bearing, 3 mm 
glue is not cut except the one or two slot the way uh, to match this oil supply will have a drill over here. And below 3 mm from the surface outer surface the groove will start so groove will depth will be 7 mm if the, I am assuming the 10 mm is the thickness of the this sparing. In that case 3 mm will be thickness for outside and 7 mm will, uh, will be the depth of pocket. So, there is a possibility we can keep any arrangement if we require a very low flow rate laser supply of oil in those situation we will prefer this oil hole arrangement because the weakening effect is minimum. Weakening in the strength of this bearing material will be minimum while in this case uh, weakening effect is slightly on more side higher side while in this case is a maximum size. And if I clear, uh, we say that when we do analysis we factly we assume the bearing length is a lesser than half of the bearing. And we consider these two bearings as a, uh, this as a two bearing instead of one bearing for bearing analysis. Now, there are some Kerfoot equation we can find out oil flow rate using finite difference method through iterative schemes, but there are well established Kerfoot equation available for these three arrangements single oil hole groove extend being may be say 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree, 100 degree, 120 degree depends on the requirement and finally, 360 degree. So, this this equation is for oil hole and that is why we say that whatever where is the groove is there what is the film thickness there. You can see it is the sensitivity is maximum it is in a cubic form larger the value of H g larger will be the flow rate. However, if we increase the supply pressure flow rate also will increase, but you can see the sensitivity flow rate uh, supply pressure is not that much dominating effect compared to this dominating effect. Viscosity will also play a role larger the viscosity lesser will be flow rate that is the definition of the viscosity it gives a more and more resistance to the flow larger viscosity naturally will give more flow lesser flow rate. And this is a comes to the geometry parameter d h is a diameter of the hole divided by length assuming d h will be much smaller in the length or we say compared to the length it may be the less than 10 percent even based on this we can find out what will be the flow rate. Where we will be using flow rate naturally we will be using flow rate when we talk about uh, temperature rise. The major purpose of high flow rate is to reduce the temperature rise. Now, for the complete groove 360 degree groove we are able to uh, get slightly more tedious terms. So, in this case we are writing L minus A that means, we are talking about the width of the groove. If the length is 50 mm width is a 5 mm naturally effective length is a 45 mm. Then we are talking only C D here instead of S G. C D plays important role. Of course, when we talk about S G, it will come indirectly. S G will be represented as a C in bracket one plus epsilon cos theta. So similar way, the C D is coming in this option uh, in, in this uh, relation. And uh, in addition, there's a viscosity effect also. So supply pressure obviously, the, uh, if I know the supply pressure flow rate can be calculated for 360 groove circumferential groove at the mid plane by using this relation. More general, more general is uh, third equation which is for the partial groove where theta 3 and theta 4 are going to decide what will be the angular extent of this groove. Again, in this case, the CD is appearing and this is the maximum uh, sensitivity, supply pressure, viscosity, F1 and F2, and F1 and F2 can be determined based on the flume thickness, obviously, the shaft position, finding the eccentricity and find out the what will be the separation from the mean line or from the line of center with this x, uh, we are assuming that. Uh, that is going to impart and that is going to be playing very important to line of center. So, once we know 
theta 3, theta 4, we can find out f 1 and f 2. Once we know f 1 and f 2, we can find out what will be the flow rate for partial groove. So, these relations are well established by the Martin number somewhere in 1983 and we use commonly in number of books and in our lecture also we can utilize those relations. If we find temperature rise is significant. If temperature rise is a well within bound, we may not require high pressure, supply pressure just above the atmospheric pressure. In those situation, flow rate due to this arrangement is not going to play major role. It will be the flow rate due to hydrodynamic action because we know the dragging action shaft when the shaft rotates and there is a viscous liquid, shaft will pull that liquid along the shaft surface. Now, when you think about the designing general bearing, we have three parameters. What is a length, what is a length to diameter ratio? What should be the clearance? What should be the radial clearance? And how much pressure will be generated? What will be the maximum value of generated pressure? Naturally, they are going to depend on something. This length depends on how much length we require for support. If there is any space limitation, we will go for more number of bearings. And of course, this length also is going to play a role in load carrying capacity. Larger length, larger will be the load carrying capacity. So, load capacity, space limitation, if there is any space limitation, that should be the first constraint. We know that uh, available space is avail uh, only 5 mm. I am designing bearing for 25 mm, obviously, the dimensions are 25 mm. Naturally, that bearing is not going to get fitted there we have to reduce dimension. So, that space restriction should be the first point to consider and subsequently load capacity and uh, other rates or other parameters. Coming to the clearance, actually again now uh, first thing is that what is the manufacturing capabilities? If you are not able to keep well with uh, good tolerances on the surfaces, tight tolerances on the surfaces then clearance need to be thought in some range. But we required some understanding, we say increasing clearance is going to reduce load carrying capacity. Larger the clearance, lesser will be load carrying capacity. Again, if there is a larger clearance, film thickness will be increasing, maximum value of film thickness is going to increase, which is a function of clearance. Naturally, when that is going to increase, flow rate is going to increase in cubic form because uh, flow rate depends on edge of the cube of edge. Sometimes we talk about clearance related to the surface compliance. Some surfaces can elastically deform. It was mentioned in a rolling element bearing. When a shaft surface or the bearing surface gets displaced from its original position, plumb thickness is going to vary, is going to change. And that is a, instead of thinking of plumb thickness point of view, we say that clearance is going to change. We keep very low clearance, load is applied and the bearing is made of a sheet metal. Naturally, that sheet metal will be displaced and that is going to increase the clearance or maybe say can, can keep a constant clearance. As one is a pressure, you said that generation of pressure will be depending on a geometric, a lubricant and operating parameter. So, this is a most complex depending on number of things. It is going to involve operating parameters, operating conditions. So, it cannot be decided initially, we require some analysis for this purpose. However, we have some table available, say that maximum pressure which need to be generated or which generates within a bearing should not exceed these limits which are different for different materials. We are saying the lead based materials are generally softer materials, they cannot tolerate maximum pressure greater than 5.6 mega Pascal. However, we require a larger load carrying capacity, we can come to the copper based material, which have a 
maximum pressure limit up to 28 mega Pascal. Again we are talking about the sum range, we are not talking about the constant value because the lead based material will not be only one material, it will be based on number of combinations, different additives can be used or different other materials can be used. That is why these materials generally are given or the pressure limits are given in the range. They are not a single material, it is a lead based material that does not mean it is the only one material. It can be a group of materials, that is why we are defining some range for that group. Now, uh, we said that uh, most critical is that how to find out the pressure. Once I know the pressure distribution, then only I can find out what will be the maximum pressure. That is why start with again Reynolds equation, which involves a pressure distribution term. Left hand side pressure, right hand side source term. If we assume we are dealing with a steady state condition. I will say that delta h by delta t is 0, flum thickness is not going to change with time. Naturally, this term will be 0 and we are going to discuss only steady state condition. That means, this is 0 only these terms are going to act. Again, this partial differential equation will be slightly complex to solve we require finite difference or final element method to solve it. For general classroom conditions or classroom environment, we prefer some approximation. One approximation which we discussed in previous lecture is static or is a short static bearing or short bearing. In other words, this length is much smaller than diameter. It can be 0.25 times of diameter, 0.3 times of the diameter, which is a more dominating feature of the um, dimension, particularly in automotive industry. Now, when we say length is negligible compared to diameter, naturally this term will be much more dominating compared to this first term. So, that is why for simplicity, first term can be neglected, or we can write this equation second term and right hand side first term. So, this equation can be written over here. There is another possibility if a bearing is a long. First slide of this lecture I showed a long bearing. In this situation length is much more uh, much greater than diameter. And that is why we mentioned the L by D ratio on those in uh, those bearing is equal to 4. For this kind of approximation, for this kind of assumption, naturally second term is not going to play major role. The first term is going to play major role. That is why the relation will be modified like this. And uh, we discussed earlier what will be the hybridization approach. We know these two result, the, these two approximation gives extreme results, and pressure estimated by either of these will not be that high in actual case. That is why we adopted hybrid approach, harmonic combination, inverse combination of these two pressure here P naught or P O is short bearing approximation and we say the length is equal to 0. So, that is why the P naught while second approximation say so length is infinitely long that is why the p infinity and this is actual case right. So, this is a short bearing, long bearing use harmonic combination to calculate this. If we uh, have uh, some interest in uh, doing the hieronymic uh, calculation based on this approximation you can refer this paper published in 1997 is almost a 9 page paper detailed paper how to design hard dynamic bearing accurately in simpler way. I am talking both the thing simpler way and accuracy. These are the simple approximation, but they are not going to give reliable results. For classroom we will be following the short bearing approximation, but same procedure can be used with hybrid approach also. So, I am going to demonstrate in present lecture short bearing approximation and leaving hybrid approx uh, approximation for yourself. You can refer this paper if you have difficulty in solving this equation. 
this is a detailed one. Now, what is missing in this? We are talking about the Reynolds equation and which is a depending on the film thickness, depending on the viscosity, depending on the velocity. We know velocity is input parameter, viscosity is input parameter, but will be changed with the temperature. So, this is the most critical parameter H. Sensitivity is very high, the film thickness expression is important for us. So, let us concentrate on how to drive expression for the H. So, film thickness H can be derived by analyzing the geometric configuration of the general bearing. So, next slide is completely on the film thickness and let us see this um, kind of figure, we say that there is a maximum film thickness minimum film thickness, there is a line of center, both the centers are going to lie on this line, O B is a bearing center, O J is a general center, R 1 is the radius of bearing surface, R 2 is radius of shaft surface, here we are talking about the bearing bow R 1 and we are talking about the solid shaft or the hollow shaft even, but the outer radius is R 2 and separation between uh, these two surfaces will be represented in radial direction as a h. That means, we are dealing with the polar coordinates. Now, expand this, I would say maybe say analyze only relevant portions. For that purpose, we are drawing this sketch. So, O B O J distance is E eccentricity, then O J B, O J B is the radius, the shaft surface is starting from O J to the B the shaft surface. Then O B A is a bearing surface or bearing radius. Separation between A and B is equal to H. I'm assuming and we are talking about any uh, maybe theta is 0 at maximum film thickness side or on this line and theta will be pi when H minimum. And we are going to discuss about the half bearing that means, bearing which a pressure zone is start from theta is equal to 0 and extend up to theta is equal to pi or more meaningful results can be achieved based on this theta equal to 0 to theta is equal to pi in this domain only. Assuming this domain has a mostly cavitation or is a cavitated streamers, pressure generation will not be significant in this situation. So, how do you find on the flow thickness H? Simple approximation we say resolve, let us take a component of E, the E cos theta or O j L as a E cos theta, O b A is a cos alpha R 1 cos alpha minus this R 2 that is going to give H. What we are doing? We are taking component in horizontal direction or on the horizontal line, component R 1 on the horizontal line. So, it will be O j L and L A that is giving complete length O j A, but we know O j A can be dissolved as O j B and B A. We know R2, we can find out H by equilibrium that will turn out to be E cos theta plus R cos alpha minus R2. Naturally, we do not know anything about alpha. We know the theta is going to vary from 0 to pi, but what is the value of alpha? For that purpose, we can use a second relation. We know this is a triangle OJ, OBA is a triangle. We can use a triangle sign rules E divided by sin alpha. R 1 divided by sin theta that is a given over here E divided by sin alpha equal to R 1 divided by sin theta and we are interested to find out the sin alpha. Take, in the, take this as the right hand side E divided by R 1 into sin theta will be given as a sin alpha. Now, some approximation say E maximum value of E is clearance and we know clearance divided by R 1 will be much smaller ratio. We often prefer clearance equal to 0.1 percent of R 1 or another one 0 0.001 R 1. Naturally, E by R 1 will be a negligible quantity and it is been multiplied by sin theta. Now, if we even assume the E by R 1 as a 0.1, this alpha in degree will be far lesser than 1 degree, it is not going to vary significantly. 
is much much lesser than 1 degree or uh, another word I can take approximation sin alpha equal to 0 negligible. If that is an approximation then R1 cos alpha cos alpha will turn out to be equal to 1. If that is a situation this whole expression will be E cos theta plus R1 minus R2. We know R1 minus R2 is equal to clearance and that is over here h is equal to E cos theta plus clearance. We have been mentioning in earlier cases that we are more interested in normalization of eccentricity. Uh, we are more interested in clearance uh, in uh, eccentricity ratio that is epsilon and that is why we are taking this C as a common. When you take C as a common this will turn out to be 1 plus small e divided by C that is eccentricity ratio into cos theta. In other words flown thickness can be represented as function of clearance epsilon and cos theta. That is why we are talking about the maximum flown thickness and minimum flown thickness. Here maximum flown thickness theta is equal to 0. The maximum flown thickness will turn out to be C into 1 plus epsilon. Then we are talking about the minimum flown thickness this theta will be pi that means this cos theta will be minus 1 or h will be c in bracket 1 minus epsilon that is a minimum flum thickness. So, this kind of representation is a helpful to find or what will be max flum thickness, what will be minimum flum thickness. And we know the minimum maximum flum thickness we can locate the groove at that position and we know because of that position placement of the oil hole will be getting maximum flow rate there with the lesser supply pressure, lesser running cost. So, based on uh, this kind of analysis we can figure out how bearing design should be done with the bearing should be designed. Now, uh, comes to the driving of the pressure we say let us uh, start uh, for the bearing. We are assuming the short bearing approximation as h is a not a function of z. So, it can be taken out without any differentiation and uh, again if I assume for time being eta is not of depending on the z. So, it can be taken out and can be rearranged this equation can be rearranged like this second derivative of pressure with respect to z equal to this 6 eta u this will remain constant for the one operation. Of course, the eta is going to change with the temperature. We need to find out the temperature and the corresponding change. We need to change uh, eta in this situation, those situation. H cube, there is a flum thickness and the gradient of H with respect to x. This is the one and we can integrate it. We can integrate once and use this boundary condition. Say gradient of pressure will be 0 at the mid plane because we know at the mid plane there will be maximum pressure and maximum pressure can be obtained by equating the expression of the gradient of pressure at equal to 0 for that position. And this is the words as shown in earlier slide you can see at the when the z is equal to 0 this is a max going to give maximum pressure. When z is not equal to 0 this will be giving slightly lesser pressure or maximum pressure lesser than maximum pressure in this situation right. So, this is a 1 now when you substitute this uh, 0 at uh, this gradient angle 0 this constant integration constant c 1 or d 1 or whatever constant this will turn out to be 0 that is why it has been written as simple multiply with the z in this situation we can go ahead with the second derivative or we can second integration and you can use a boundary condition we know at the exit pressure will be 0 will be atmospheric or if it is in uh, some process of uh, fluid it will turn out to be uh, some value then we need to define for time being we are assuming the pressure the gauge pressure outside the bearing surface is equal to 0 and that can be we can use any of this condition minus z equal to minus l by 2 or z equal to plus l by 2 we can use any uh, condition we will be getting same expression like this. So, this is a simplified expression depends on velocity, depends on viscosity, depends on the flum thickness and we have already found what will be the h in terms of theta. Naturally, x need to be converted in terms of theta that will be r theta 
when we do that substitute what we are getting the pressure relation of something like this. So, 3 u velocity eta divided by this this should be the c cube, but 1 c cube here and 1 c here. So, we are cancelling that c with this and that is why we are writing c square. Well, this is a 1 plus epsilon cos theta is representing the flum thickness and uh, this is a dh by dx which has been represented like this into c which is a 1 c has been cancelled with this and this is the same thing. So, this is a pressure distribution. Now, we can find out similar this kind of pressure distribution using this relation that is a pressure. Now, what is the next point? Next point for us is to find out the load carrying capacity of the bearing which is not the important aspect for us. For finding the load carrying capacity naturally we had to go ahead with the force balance equation. What is the force balance equation? We say we are dealing with the polar coordinates. So, better resolve this component in polar form. We now there is a load will be applied on a journal and vertically down direction that is a shown over here and this is the line of center naturally angle between line of center and apply load will be fine. At any angular position at the angular position of theta we can take very small segment having a angular extent of d theta and they are assuming this is the radius r. So, pressure if the pressure has been generated there force due to that pressure will turn out to be pressure into area and area we know it is r d theta into d z that is a what we are giving the pressure. Now, we can resolve this pressure along this line and perpendicular line up. If we dissolve in this and perpendicular to find out the thermal uh, find out the force balance naturally we need to resolve this w also w cos phi this way and w sin phi perpendicular. When we say the w sin phi this side p r d theta d z also in this side naturally summation will turn out to be 0 and that is going to give a first equation. So, w cos phi equal to minus because summation equal to 0 when I take this term in right hand side naturally it will be minus the extent is a 0 to pi or the theta extent is 0 to pi. We are assuming bearing is only 50 percent bearing half of the bearing and is this is known as a half summer fell number condition half summer uh, summer fell condition. When we know the z it is a mid plane 0 and outside is a minus l by 2 to l by 2. So, this is a going to this integration is going to give us w cos phi first component or uh, one uh, component of the force. Similarly, we can use a sign this is what we say the half pairing has been considered this is the second component w sin phi equal to 0 to pi length will be same minus l by 2 to l by 2 p r sin theta d theta d z we need to integrate this to get the positive result to get the benefit or to find out what will be the w. What we can do simply manner integrate it. I am not uh, involving all the steps, but I am giving directly final results of this. So, when we integrate it what we are going to get minus u eta l cube divided by 2 c square 2 epsilon square 1 minus epsilon square and whole square of this that is the first component of the load this is the second component of the load. Now, we can take a square root of sin uh, of this component and this component and find out what will be the w and that w turn out to be u that is a velocity, eta, viscosity, length and it shows the length is a very dominating feature in this case. Larger length 2 times length is going to increase the load by 8 times pi and there is a clearance ratio and epsilon term. So, it is a complete epsilon term that is going to give us what will be the load carrying capacity for given bearing geometry and location of shaft surface or general surface. There is a another one important we were uh, say the for location purpose we required eccentricity and attitude angle. That attitude angle can be given as like this is a 10 phi that means a w sin phi divided by w cos phi this term will be in a numerator this term will be in a denominator when we do that what finally calculation this will be negative of this. So, final results will turn out to be something like this we say 10 phi is equal to pi by 4 
square root 1 minus epsilon square divided by epsilon. So, this is going to give us attitude angle. We will continue with this in our uh, next lecture that will be also lecture on a journal bearing. Thanks for your attention.